All right, so this video is going to be a little bit more advanced. I'm going to be trying to talk about a real life work scenario that we just ran into where sometimes if your systems are too coupled together, you can get a lot of issues when you're trying to update or upgrade different libraries. And that's exactly the issue that we ran into. Um, quick overview is we like to do a lot of Lambda and serverless deployments on our project. And one use case that we have to do a lot in all of these deployed lambdas is basically generating PDFs for our users. Although I don't work on anything like super top secret, I just don't feel comfortable talking and giving like real information about what I work on. So I'm going to abstract this away and kind of talk about students, classrooms or classes and teachers and kind of like scope it in that. And I think the point will still kind of drive home. So in our system, we have an API and we deploy that to a mono lambda. So like I could just say like API and that's a lambda. And we also deploy out other things, right? We use Cognito at work. So like we have Cognito triggers and this is basically like code that runs when someone tries to log in or when someone first registers for the first time. We have some logic basically to do some things when people log in after changing their email address and we have to like do a bunch of stuff under the hood when they log in for the first time with a new email. We also have a couple of other lambdas. I'm not going to like get into it, but overall, in our system, we have a, a use case to generate a lot of PDFs. So as an example, let's say there's a class and whenever a student enrolls in a class, we actually need to generate a PDF and put that PDF on a, like a ledger basically that says, Hey, student a just enrolled in your class on this date, et cetera. It's like a, a legal thing to have like these PDFs on this like public ledger. Another scenario is like, let's say you have a user, a student who is registered with like eight different classes and they were to change their legal name or they changed their uh, mailing address. We actually have to loop over every single classroom that they're enrolled in, generate a PDF and put that PDF on a public ledger so that everyone who's part of that classroom can see how students have been coming in and out of the classroom and other stuff. Again, this is just a generic thing. Like I'm just talking abstracts here. Okay. So let's talk about like the PDF generation. Okay. Cause this is an important part of the problem. In order to run PDFs on Lambda, you have to bundle up like a puppeteer binary. There's other ways that you can generate PDFs. The approach that we took on this project is by using Puppeteer, which is a library you can use to basically spin up a Chromium browser. You feed it some HTML and it spits out a PDF. Um, there's other purposes for Puppeteer, but that's one use case of Puppeteer. I'll just go ahead and say like this is Puppeteer, right? Puppeteer. There's a Puppeteer library that's needed. And inside this library, we also need binaries, right? So kind of large binaries that need to be put on the Lambda. Let me just go ahead and scale this up a little bit. So this is kind of how it looks like. We got a Lambda and inside of Lambda, we have a Puppeteer library and we got some binaries. And this is all used so that we can generate PDFs by basically taking React components. We compile those in the HTML. We tack on some CSS and then we pass it the Puppeteer and the Puppeteer basically outputs uh, PDFs. Okay, so I'll just say like PDF. Awesome. This works great. But the issue that we ran into recently is that all of our lambdas are running on node 16. You might say, okay, why is that an, why is that an issue? It's not, but we decided that we wanted to update everything to use node 18 just because it's kind of supported in Amazon and it's kind of the latest version of long-term support. So we kind of want to use it. I think 20 just came out recently as well. So we might have to update whenever Amazon adds support to node 20. But the idea is that we have all these lambdas that are all using node 16 and they all have this need to potentially generate PDFs. Okay. So we have this code that basically we have like node code that runs in all these lambdas and it works great for node 16. But the issue is that when we upgraded it to node 18, all the PDF generation started breaking. It started complaining about stuff, not being uh, binaries, not existing on the system. And I guess behind the scenes, Amazon's Lambda doesn't have certain binaries when you upgrade to node 18. There's probably other solutions that we can figure out. But when we tried to update node 18, what we realized is that we can't generate PDFs anymore. So we had to kind of do a lot of work to figure out what's going on. How can we fix the issue? And it also kind of surfaced an issue with our system. And that is coupling because what I'm showing you right now, this isn't actually how it works. We actually use something called a layer. So like we have a layer here and when we deploy all of these things, <clears throat> we kind of like take the layer and we attach it to the Lambda, right? AWS Lambda has a way to basically attach layers 
And uh, we have this layer that's kind of shared amongst all these lambdas. So the issue is like, we want to upgrade these, these lambdas to be able to use node 18. But when we do that, it breaks. All right, so again, like all of these lambdas, we have like some others over here that I'm not really talking about, but they're all super coupled to this PDF generation. So the idea that we're going to try to do now is that instead of having all these lambdas basically be able to generate PDFs when like they execute, instead, what we're going to try to do is we're going to move this code. We're going to try to make a separate lambda, right? So this is a lambda that's in charge of basically generating the PDFs. And this is going to be a deployed Lambda that's separate. This is going to be using that Lambda layer. But how this changes these other things is that now these things don't need to know about how to generate PDFs. They don't even need to know about the Lambda layer. All their responsibility is, is just like take API requests or take your Cognito triggers. And we're going to have those invoke the Lambda to do the PDF generation. Okay. Now, again, what is this buying us? This is decoupling the idea of generating PDFs, kind of like into a microservice, but we're just doing the simplest approach, which is just separating a single Lambda, which has its own PDF binaries. It has like a single function. And the idea is that we're passing the information that's needed to this Lambda so it can generate the PDFs. And then later it can kind of store those uh, in S3. Okay, so I'll go over here, I'll do like an arrow to S3. And when this PDF generation is done and it gets stored to S3, these things will be able to basically wait until that finishes and then it can kind of do its normal flow where it talks to Dynamo, updates some entries for all the classrooms, etc. Okay, so if you're like looking at this diagram, you really don't understand like what what's the purpose of this. What this buys us is that we can update and upgrade this Lambda individually. So if let's say in six months from now, we decide that we want to upgrade to node 18 or node 20, we can actually upgrade these things individually and not have to worry about potentially breaking the PDF. Um, Lambda, right? Because this is all a separate deployment. It's all using its own isolated stuff. So we can keep this on node 16 if we want to, or keep it on node 14, whatever, and not have to change anything about this and be able to upgrade these things individually. Now, another thing I wanted to mention is that because before we had these layers attached to these other Lambdas, in order for Puppeteer to even run, you have to like allocate like 300 megabytes, or I guess three gigabytes, to these, uh, these lambdas, right? Which is quite a lot of memory for a simple API that's supposed to just take in requests, maybe write stuff to a database, and then send a response back. So again, like we were so coupled to the lambda layers and like the PDF generation that it's kind of forcing our hand that, or that we have to specify a very large memory size on the lambdas, which this solution over here that I just talked about, again, this allows us to scale this one up as needed. And this one can stay at like whatever we want. Like this could be 725 megabytes. Let's say the triggers doesn't need that much. We can say 512 megabytes or something like that. So again, the, the main takeaway from this video, if you guys um, are still watching, is that often when you're coding, you will implement solutions that you think are good. And then at some point you need to upgrade or update things. Everything starts breaking and then, and then the tech debt kind of like starts surfacing, right? You start seeing issues with your system of like, okay, it shouldn't have been this hard to upgrade a single node library or a single node version. But when you start running into all this friction by doing something really basic that you think should be easy, that is a good sign, like a huge red flag that you have something wrong with your system. And what we call that is tech debt. And what you should do is you should stop doing feature development and you really should address that tech debt then and there, right? Don't postpone this. Like what we could potentially do is just like, well, whatever, we got it working with node 18. Let's just not worry about separating this thing out because you know, it's going to take us an extra week or two. But if you're trying to become like a good engineer and you want to follow good coding practices, you have to kind of nip this tech debt in the butt before it gets out of hand because at some point, you're going to have to upgrade again to a higher node version. You're going to run into the same issue again, and you just don't want this to happen. So if you run into issues with this, fix it. If you can, if you can allocate time, like convince your, um, your team, basically say like, hey, we've identified like this one part of the system that is just, it's too coupled. We got to fix it and just take time to do it. So yeah, let me know if you guys like watching this kind of more advanced talk about software. I, I love drawing diagrams. I find it really fun. Um, but hopefully you guys kind of learned something from this scenario.
Anyway, that's all I got to say. So if you enjoyed watching, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And uh, also, I got a Discord. You're welcome to join if you just want to find a place to hang out with some other developers and ask questions. Uh, the description should be, or the link should be in the description below. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.